I'm gonna condense my six years of learning copywriting for Facebook ads, for landing pages, for marketing campaigns into this one video. So please get out your notes. I wanna see your page full and come back to this because this is one of the most important skills possible. This video features some clips from my two hour Facebook ads from beginner to expert training, but has a lot of extra clips. So if you've already seen it, I'd recommend still watching it all the way through for review, but the new content starts right at that time code. I'll have a link to that training at the end. Let's jump into it right now. Copywriting is the key to successful Facebook ads. The words that you're using in your headlines, your descriptions, uh, in your videos, um, text overlaid on your videos and photos. This is so crucial and you have to get it right. One of the worst things that you can do in Facebook is just being incredibly boring. You want to inspire some sort of emotion, you know, make people build up curiosity, uh, make people smile, make them laugh. Uh, it can even be, it's a little harder. You have to be a little more skilled to do like sadness or frustration or anger properly. And there's also some stuff that's not allowed on Facebook. Uh, I do have a full video on that, but I will be covering some of that in this video stuff to avoid to get avoid getting your account shut down or banned. I want you to think about online dating apps, even if you've never been on one. On those apps, if you send the first message, hi, or hey, or how's it going, you're just gonna blend in with everyone else and the chances that anyone is going to notice that or respond to that is close to zero. You'd actually be much better off uh, doing something, even something random like off the wall or just building curiosity like, wow, I don't believe it, dot, dot, dot. Something like that actually makes people want to engage or learn more or read more because there's a part of the brain that's just like, well, what can't they believe? What is it that uh, is shocking to them or is exciting? So one of the big mistakes that people make is on their Facebook ads, they try to sell the entire product on Facebook. So they say, hey, here's the product. It's so amazing. Uh, here's all the features. Here's all the benefits. You really need this. You gotta go get it. The challenge is people need to take a lot of steps to actually make the purchase. So they see the ad, they go to the web page. they'll likely wanna read more about it. Uh, they add it to their cart, they go to checkout, they punch in their credit card, all of that. So really, I found a lot of the times it's a little bit more effective to actually sell the next step to convince people to visit the page, to learn more. So a lot of times curiosity has to be a part of that where maybe you give them some info, but maybe you tease like a feature or something else that people really wanna learn more. So you do want the people to click to be people who are qualified to be a customer. So you probably wanna include a little bit about the product, but it could definitely be something like these protein packed potato chips are disrupting a $10 billion industry. And then people have to click more to like learn how uh, that they, they could be really curious about like how it's changing it. Um, or it could be like learn why people are raving about this protein packed uh, potato chip. So people think that the word you is just completely forbidden and that's not entirely true, but you definitely want to be careful because you can't call out people's attributes, meaning you can't target Jewish men and be like, hey, are you a Jewish man that is in college or something like that? That's not allowed on Facebook. Uh, you definitely can't be really negative. Like, are you tired of being fat and lazy? That's not gonna fly. Also on Facebook, uh, people give reactions and can report stuff. Uh, so even if it somehow did get approved, um, you would probably just get pulled because people would be downvoting it and responding really negatively to it but you could do something like, are you eating healthier but missing potato chips? And people who that applies to are probably gonna be amazing for your product. And those people are like, oh man, I was just, I feel exactly this way. It really resonates with how they are feeling. Uh, other questions, you know, that make people be like, oh man, uh, it could be like, how much money is leaky faucets costing you? Or if you, suddenly there's a question in people's mind and they're like, well, how much, is it costing me? I really need to know. That's, that's really pertinent information for me to figure out. 
So something that's pretty common is rather than jumping into pushing a product immediately, we'll do a helpful article, which it's called a pre-sell article. Um, so I highly recommend you try this out at some point. So let's say you have an acne product. Um, rather than just saying, hey, this is the best acne cream ever, you need to buy it, here's the checkout page. You know, you can say five little known strategies to combat acne. And then you list out and it has helpful information for people. It's really useful, it's got your branding on it. Um, and then one of those includes your product um, and then your product's linked there. And then you can link to your product again at the end. And then we are gonna add the people who read that article to have them see future ads because now they're a lot more engaged, they're a lot more likely to buy and that can work really, really well because sometimes people kind of pull back if you just immediately go for the sale, uh, especially if it's something a little more expensive, if, if it's like a $200 teeth whitening, you just have to think always from customers perspectives you know are they going to be just scrolling through and then all of a sudden it's like hey this teeth whitening is two hundred dollars it's amazing they're like oh yeah i'm sold click on the page go to checkout buy right away it often just takes several different steps we're going to go into that when we set up the exact structure the exact ads you also want to just think about it's called social proof when you really show that a lot of people really like this or are interested it's popular uh so for one product you know They've sold millions and millions. So definitely we highlighted that, that millions of people uh, have used it, have bought it. Um, in terms of reviews, you can say, hey, this has over 300,000 five-star reviews. Um, learn about the product that people are raving about. Um, people don't wanna miss out on something and they don't really want to have this really hot product that other people love and use and are really into and they're just out of the loop. So it's interesting with Facebook ads, you have the headline, like the main text that people see, uh, the text down below, but if it's a photo or, or a video, you can also put text like at the top or on the photo. So you'd really want those to be just suck people in, especially with a video where they see that text and say, oh, I have to watch this. Um, you know, if the text is, suppose this happened to you on your wedding day, they really am go are gonna wanna find out more and actually watch some of that video, or if it's on the page, actually click on that page. We also wanna think about what is every single reason that someone would buy this product? And what is every single reason that someone would not buy this product? What are they complaining about? You know, a lot of people, they add something to their cart and then they don't make it to the end. They have second thoughts. They think maybe I should ask my significant other. There's some reason that keeps them from buying. Running Facebook ads, doing marketing, it's basically just doing the whole sales thing to a whole bunch of people at once. So if you're doing sales, you're trying to you know, highlight the things that people care about, but also find out every single thing that they are going to object to. So you wanna think about every single objection someone would have to buying your product. Three really common ones is like the price that people are just hesitant to spend the money to really feel like it is worth it, like the value is there, or like they'll save money or time in other areas to make it actually worth it. Um, another really common one is just the quality. So you can have a product and they say, oh, that sounds really great, um, but I had a motorized scooter that just broke down after three weeks, it was such a pain. Uh, why is this one any different? Um, is your product gonna work? Is it gonna actually do everything it says? So you can make a lot of claims, but how can you actually offer proof or other people saying that or really demonstrate exactly how your product is different from other ones? where people are like, okay, yeah, I actually do think that that is worth it. The goal is never to sell to someone that is not a good fit for, um, but people, even people who are the perfect customers, the perfect buyers, are probably not just gonna immediately see it and then check out and make the purchase. They wanna actually get some more info so they feel actually confident in their purchase. So definitely having all those lists of every reason people wouldn't buy is so important because we're gonna include that in our ads, especially the ads that we show to people who like visited the page or started a checkout and didn't actually finish. That's gonna be central to that. We talked about not being boring. You also wanna think about not being too corporate. So actually speaking like everyday people speak, uh, sometimes I actually pull out like a voice recorder. So I actually 
talk just in like a casual, fun way. You know, you can have some personality, uh, that emotion. You don't have to be quote unquote professional. Anytime that you can make a message more customized to a specific group, the better. So if you wrote down, okay, nurses is who we're targeting, we'll definitely want to include some things that are very, very specific to them because we can launch a campaign that is only shown to nurses and only speaks directly to them. If you do have an existing list of customers, I would actually look through that list of people and write down anything that you notice about them, you know, age ranges, gender, uh, profession is a really big one, um, interest, even like the type of magazines and things like that that they read. Anytime you can build in some sort of guarantee or like free returns or anything like that, that just builds a lot of confidence for people. Like with my courses, I don't want anyone to pay who's not happy with it. So 30 days later, I have a no questions asked money back guarantee. Um, so whatever works for your business, but um, don't think of it as a loss because you could generate twice as many sales by having an amazing guarantee um, and then you lose 6%, but you end up way, way ahead because you generated so many sales. I also think like comparing and contrasting can be pretty effective. So you wanna think about your competition. Uh, often I don't directly call them out by name um, but it can kind of just be you versus the competitors. So let's say the potato chip example, you just take your average bag of potato chips and it's like them, oh, they've got no protein and we've got six grams of protein. They've got this many calories, this much fat, uh, where you can directly see the two comparing contrasted. It's a really cool visual way and good way to use text to show, hey, here's how we're different than all of the competitors, than the potato chip industry, just for this example. You do wanna think about urgency and scarcity. So maybe a limited time sale or like a limited amount in stock. That can be something that really drives a whole lot more sales, but I don't think that you want to fake it and have fake countdown timers that don't actually expire or pretend there's a limited amount in stock. I think you wanna actually strategically plan when you have unique sales or things like that. You definitely wanna avoid just generic buzzwords that don't really mean anything. So for example, we have the leading product, we have all of the solutions, our product is unique, our product is innovative, cutting edge. That really doesn't describe basically anything at all. Uh, you really want your ads to be very, very specific to you. Something that text and headlines that your competitors could never use because they're unique to you and your audience. Going back to potato chip example, if you have eight grams of protein and your competitors don't, and you highlight that, that's not an ad that they could run. It's very specific, it's quantifiable. It really demonstrates how you are different than them. I'd actually really encourage you to get really creative and zany and out there because sometimes that really catches people's attention. If you want to put on a superhero cape and smash watermelons with a sledgehammer, if you can do a good job tying it into your message and your sales, like that's something that could really catch people's attention. It could completely flop, but often the ones that do very best are ones where you're actually taking a risk versus just going with super generic, not creative at all. People are generally trying to avoid things or get things. So, you know, they could be trying to gain wealth, they could be trying to gain health, um, the attraction of other people, um, looking young, things like that. They could be trying to avoid, you know, health issues, um, financial ruin, um, being humiliated. You can't go too extreme or heavy handed on Facebook. You don't want people to overly feel bad, but you want to think about what's their ultimate desire. You also want to think about avoiding too many technical specifications. Uh, some audiences may care. So if you're selling a computer, uh, if you're targeting really tech savvy people, you could talk about gigahertz and all these different things, but just realize if you're going to a larger audience, make sure at least 95% of people understand what the word is and try to avoid technical things as much as possible. You need to talk about like the emotional thing or what they'll be able to accomplish. As a computer, 
Um, okay, the computer's really fast. What does that allow them to do? Um, they can get their work done two hours earlier, which gives them time to spend with their family. Uh, they can avoid like banging on the keyboard stuff loads instantly. Like think about the real world impact. You know, if you're selling someone a hammer, they are going to be excited about the projects that they can take on, you know, the way that they can transform their house, build a deck, things like that, um, which gets them other things they want, like respect from the neighbors or from their spouse or from all sorts of things. So really try to go deep with what people's core desires are with everything. It's also important not to just be solely focused on a single product and think about the different offers that you could create for people. You know, you could do a bundle of products that people buy for $100 but you really are creating like the story and the excitement and the vision for what people can do with that, with that bundle or with that group of products or things like that. So we're gonna go into creating and structuring that offer a little bit later, but definitely keep that in your mind. Stories are incredibly powerful. I first learned about this from Russell Brunson, but really thinking about the emotional journey you went on to kind of have the revelation of how amazing the product was uh, so that journey where you were like struggling with something and you got the product and that offered solution uh, taking people through that whole emotional roller coaster and getting them into the same emotional state so you almost lead them up to the epiphany of why they need the product rather than just saying oh this product's amazing for example if it's like a new computer really talking about what life was like how it was frustrating everything was taking forever uh, your boss was yelling at you, things like that, and just the various emotional things you went through. And then all of a sudden you learned how much things could change with the new product. And then you kind of have that after state. You got the computer, things vastly changed, the ways your life are better, but you gotta get emotional and talk through those frustrations and that revelation and get people to emotionally feel that with you at the same time. People also like having certain secrets or information that other people don't. Um, for example, like find out why seven out of 10 houses don't sell. So I'll share this spreadsheet with you so you can have access. You wanna to go to file and then make a copy. You just wanna fill out every reason someone would buy, people wouldn't buy, a uh, rough draft of different headlines, different stories you can tell, uh, different audiences, or just any bonus information you've thought about. Uh, these do not need to be perfect. They don't need to be polished. We'll get that once we create our ads, but you do kind of need all this when you're going to create the ads for the very first time. As a general rule, you'll write a lot longer copy or do a longer video if it is a more expensive product. So if it's a cheap little coin, if you write pages and pages and pages trying to get someone to buy it, it's almost confusing for people or something seems like fishy or off, they can pretty quickly just decide that they want it and it's an impulse purchase. Whereas if it's an expensive product or like consulting or an expensive course, you really need to make the case for why it's worth the value and address any objections and really tell a compelling story. And in that case, it can make sense to have a very, very long page with so much information. You will still want buttons throughout where if people continue to read at the point that they're like, hey, I do wanna actually make this purchase, there's a button close by. So have the add to cart buttons throughout the page if it's really long. People should know precisely what they're getting and when they are getting it, especially with Facebook's like customer satisfaction score and just happy customers overall, they should be able to quickly describe to you exactly what is included and the timeline to expect it. Make sure that this is a part, especially of your landing page before people check out. This will also give people more confidence that they understand it, which will lead to more people completely the purchase. Get people's imagination going and get as descriptive as possible with touch and smell and taste and just how everything feels. So it could be like a piercing shriek that just almost bursts your eardrum or just gooey, slow moving, super warm chocolate or ice cold wind that just cuts through all of your clothing and you just feel the chill down to your core. This is a fantastic way to actually get them to feel emotions and actually envision them using your product or getting a benefit or dealing with the pain. It's much, much more effective. 
Everyone understands that products aren't perfect and there's always trade-offs. So don't be afraid to admit minor flaws with your product or areas where your competitors are stronger. For example, theirs may be a little bit more durable, but yours is much better because it's much more lightweight, much more portable, and that in the end makes a bigger difference. Let's talk copywriting for some of the videos themselves. What's really popular is user-generated content where you have some of your customers talking about the product, talking about it being amazing. And I find often for those, it works better to give them like an outline or very specific questions rather than giving them a word for word script, just because it will often sound very stilted and wooden and just like they're reading lines off of a script but you wanna give them an outline and it's the things we already talked about, you know, the journey they went through, their frustrations, uh, how your product really changed things and their mental state and how it made things better and painting a picture of how their life looks right now. Copywriting in emails is also incredibly important. The thanks for your order email is actually one of the most opened. So this is the perfect place to get people involved with your story or build connection or even offer them a discount or another offer, it gets opened re at really, really high rates. Also, when you're doing email marketing, just apply a lot of the same things, uh, telling a story, being conversational, being friendly. You don't need all the crazy graphics and things like that. And generally the PS in the email is one of the most read parts. So put something juicy or an offer or something in that PS. There's so many great advertisers, but three of my favorites are Gary Halpert, John Carlton, and David Ogilvy. And one of my favorite books on copywriting is Cashvertising by Drew Eric Whitman. Let me know in the comments which one of these strategies you are going to implement first. And to use one of my own strategies, people like you are definitely watching that full Facebook ad two hour training. It is the A to Z on running Facebook ads. And if you have seen that one already, be sure to check out that other video right over there.